All right, let's go Washington Commanders at the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles favored by eight and a half here in this uh, a NFC East division battle. Eagles undefeated 20 and one in the last 21 starts for Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. How many times will Sam Howell get sacked? Hmm. Coming off a nine-sack performance last week against Buffalo, and you're going up against one of the best defensive lines of the Eagles. He is now on pace to be sacked like 100-plus times in the season, which is like 30 more than the David Carr record, you know, or the, was it year one? Yes. Against year one for David Carr behind an expansion offensive line, right? Like, was it the first year of the franchise? With one of, which led to one of my favorite commercials of all time. Yeah. Where they said, the draft is coming up, and they showed, what does your team need? I said this a few times, but like, what does your team need? And it shows David Carr under center, and they, they uh, deleted the offensive I line. I remember that. Yeah, and it's yeah. him in front of, like, behind five blank people. Hmm. And uh, got sacked 76 times. And I think... But ESPN at that time, they didn't know sacks are QB stat and they're like maybe we shouldn't blame the offensive line they didn't know back then in 2002 I mean I suspect that offensive line was cheeks I'm sure they were terrible but I also suspect that David Carr heavily contributed to that sack number himself um which I think is exactly the same case with Sam Howell I think he is heavily contributing to the number of sacks he takes as I said last week he was responsible for four uh on the season it's up to seven which is the most in the NFL by three um I mean, that's what? He's been sacked 19 times, 7 out of 19. What's that percentage-wise? Uh, 368, 36.8. There you go. 36.8. He's responsible for, you know, 37% of his own sacks currently, which is a huge number. I'm like a circus freak. You really are. In feed, several different ways. Feed percentages to Steve. If we just find a way of combining height with percent, percentage naming on command. No one else can that's do that. Your, that's your niche. You think anyone else can do that? I don't. Um, man, like... Uh, two things to highlight. Uh, Jalen Carter is probably like one game away from you mentioning him as much as you would mention Aaron Donald. Like, we got to mention, like, Jalen Carter is unbelievable. Leading the NFL for interior defensive linemen in terms of pressures. By our numbers, NGS apparently has Javon Hargrave with like 182 pressures through three games. You know, I don't I, believe um, correct. I, I like the people that put, oh, so NGS numbers or ESPN's numbers? NGS. Yeah. I'm going to be honest here. I trust PFF more than I trust anything that's NGS related or yes. track, tracking data related. I don't think people understand that that number is don't get essentially into automated. I just want to, it's important to mention, right? Because the number of people throwing that number at me, their number, as far as I understand it, is effectively automated using tracking data, which has some flaws because all it can do is tell you effectively the proximity from the lineman to the quarterback and then the relative positioning of the blocker within a certain space of time, right? What it can't do is tell you, okay, but is the quarterback aware that that's happening? Because if he isn't, it's not pressure. Also, is the player like up on his feet or not? Because there's been a situation where a guy was on the floor at the time, not pressuring the quarterback, but it went down yeah. as a pressure. Now, if you're rolling toward the quarterback. Slowly. I think that's okay. Yeah. But if you're being tossed Although to Although you're not floor, allowed to grab him anymore, remember? You can't. Because now you've gone low at his ankles. It's not yeah, allowed. You just don't make contact. You have to, and then you jump up and pull him down. <laughs> From the floor. Anyway, my point being, I don't believe that their number is correct. I feel that there are flaws in the automation system. There's a reason why you don't let a computer, you know, drive you home most of the time. Because people have some important input in these things. Uh, so anyway, Jalen Carter leads the NFL in pressures for interior players. He looks pretty special. He does. And I, I want to give a shout out to his running mate, Jordan Davis. Because... Last year, Jordan Davis, I think, got off to a slow start. The Eagles defense didn't necessarily need him. But we spent so much time during the draft talking about the impact of a 360-pound nose tackle who can let you play light boxes and play the run, and we'll see if he's a good enough pass rusher. And then Jordan Davis also played hurt last year, just didn't look right. He looks right this year. He is a Vita Vea type of plays where he just wrecks a guard or a center. Best two graded players on the Eagles defense, Jalen yeah. Carter. Jordan so Davis. I wanted to highlight that. I mean, those are the, their la two of their last two first-round picks. Do you know who number three is? On the defense for the Eagles, mm -hmm. Reed Blankenship. Yeah, it is. How about that? Baller. Yeah. That dude's good. You're a Reed Blankenship fan. I like him. I like yeah. him a lot. Um, anyway, so Jordan Davis has been, you know, the, the draft analysis on Jordan Davis, the people that loved him and said this is guy, a guy that will make an impact, is, is making that impact right now. Um, the Eagles are fascinating, though, too, because their offense hasn't hit their stride. 
they've had those games. I, some of the the blocking that they have up front for DeAndre Swift, mm. I mean, that fits my like just just get a fast running back, and if you have a good offensive line, he'll run fast through the big hole. Like that's what Philadelphia is doing right now. So the offensive line looks great. The run game is looking good. Haven't hit their stride with the pass game yet. I don't know if that's actually encouraging. I thought it looked closer. It was, be- it's getting, it was better. It was definitely better. But you have like a drop time. in the end zone from AJ yeah. Brown. It's like they're not all firing on all sides. No, but for the first time, it, it looked a lot more like the Eagles than it had the first couple of weeks. And that was a game where apparently a bunch of the offense had the flu or whatever. Like they weren't, you know, physically they weren't 100% going into that game. And ah, yet that game, looked huh? closest to the Philadelphia offense we've seen so far. So I think similar to Jacksonville, I think that's probably a positive thing. We know that it's better than this. Eventually yeah. they'll you know, click itself back into form and and be good. So, yeah, I mean, I think the Eagles are, they haven't looked quite like themselves, but it sort of feels a bit more like rust than anything else. I think this Eagles team is still going to be one of the best in the NFL. Um, Just to give a little bit of love to the commanders, I want to see their defensive line again. They got kind of shut down against Buffalo last week. Buffalo schemed it up pretty well to protect themselves. I think they'll they'll have a chance to have some success to at least put some pressure on mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts for, for some turnovers. And then Sam Howell, watch, man. Like, there's been a lot of positives, but, yeah, if he doesn't if he doesn't cut down on the negative plays, I don't think it matters how well he throws the ball. No. He's thrown the ball well overall. Made some terrible decisions last week, but he's thrown the ball pretty well. Got to cut down on all those negative plays. Yeah, last week I think it was kind of a perfect storm of bad Sam Howell. Like, I think that was all of his negative traits on maximum percentage took a ton of sacks that he shouldn't take, threw a bunch of balls into silly places that he shouldn't have done, and it just, it all amounted to a disaster. The problem is, like, week one and week two, they won the game, there was some success, but they were against teams that aren't good or don't look good, and then the first good team they played, they got stumped. So now you're like, well, okay, now you're facing another very good team. What does that do? Are you going to split the difference between those two things, or are you, in fact, going to get stumped anytime you face a good team? I feel like the baseline, even against a good team for Sam Howe on that offense, won't be as bad as last week. All right, man. Let's go. um, I had one more thing to say. Maybe I don't. (laughs) Eagles favored by eight and a half. Yeah, it's a big number. Um, I think, so Washington's offensive line, I mean, people were saying the offensive line, you know, last week, nine sacks, like, Okay, we already said four of them were on Sam Howell, and then there was a lot of coverage in there as well. There was a couple quick losses yeah, in there. there was, uh, absolutely. I'm not saying it was flawless, but like, remember last year, people were acting like the Broncos had the worst offensive line in the NFL because Russ was making it look like garbage. Yeah. I, that's kind of where we are with the Washington thing. It's not a good offensive line, but neither is it anywhere near as bad as it's being made to look at the moment. Tell the people in the chat. I mean, Andrew Wiley's not great at right tackle, but yeah, it's not the worst offensive None line. None of them are great. Yeah. Like, they have. They they've sort of they have a similar offensive line to Buffalo. In all honesty, like they have deliberately kind of attained a bunch of players that are average to above average, uh, or below average in some cases. And unlike Josh Allen at their quarterback, they have a quarterback that makes that look way way worse than it is. Um, so I think generally this is not a terrible offensive line, but Sam Howell is potentially making it look catastrophic. You know, against that Philadelphia defensive line, that's potentially a fairly nasty combination. Ugh. It's a lot, and it's a big number, but I'm going to go with the Eagles. Yeah, I think I am too. Man, I'll take Philly.